I plan to offer some brief remarks, part concerned with what we've done during the last two years, and then the remainder concerned with the really difficult work that lies ahead of us. So let's begin with the last two years, and I think everybody recognizes that the Illinois General Assembly and legislatures all over the country and the Congress of the United States don't always get rave reviews about what they do. And we recognize that there's always plenty of criticism, which is the American way and is, which is the way it should be. But during the last two years, during the last session of the General Assembly, after a long, long struggle, the legislature and the governor eliminated the much maligned legislative scholarship program. During the last year and during the last four years, the Illinois legislature has taken four pay cuts. We've cut our pay every year for the last four years during the current economic crisis that afflicts the United States of America. In preparing the state budget for the second year in a row, spending has been held under a cap established by resolution adopted in the House of Representatives and adhered to by the Senate and the governor. That permitted us to reduce the backlog of unpaid bills by over $1.5 billion. The governor called upon the legislature to work with him to stabilize the Illinois Medicaid program because he was estimating that without dramatic action, the program would run a deficit of over $3 billion. And working with a group created by the governor on a bipartisan basis, including both the House and the Senate, we enacted major legislation that stabilized the Medicaid program. It provided that the eligibility determination would be taken out of the hands of state workers and put into the hands of a private company. It would be privatized, and that is completed. The legislation provided for the reduction in services, eligibility, and reimbursement rate to providers. Same package of legislation provided much needed relief for every hospital in Illinois that provides free care for the poor that just come to the hospital, tell the hospital, I don't have a doctor to go to. I don't have anywhere to go to, but I need medical care. Please give me the medical care, and the hospital does it. So under this legislation, every one of those hospitals will receive credit against their real estate taxes for the charity care rendered by that hospital. Again, the governor called upon the legislature to repeal legislation which had provided that for those participating as retirees in the state health care program who pay no premium for their health insurance, that the governor be given the authority to negotiate on that issue in the current negotiations of collective bargaining. And again, on a bipartisan basis, support from both Democrats and Republicans, that legislation was adopted the language was removed from the statute, and so the governor and his administration today, again, in collective bargaining, are able to negotiate for the elimination of a system which provides that state retirees pay no premium for health care. Next two issues were personal initiatives of myself. And they concern enterprise zones and the state workers' compensation program. Illinois has a series of enterprise zones. There's about 95. Enterprise zone means that you look at a map of the state of Illinois and you draw some lines on the map. If you happen to land inside the lines, why the business inside those lines in your area receives a great deal of state 
su subsidy assistance relief on state taxes if you fall inside the lines. Historically, those lines have been determined by an employee of the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, a government bureaucrat. And that's been going on for about 20 years or more. I initiated legislation with the strong help of Representative John Bradley, the chair of our Revenue Committee, that provided that going forward, selection of enterprise zones would be put into a competition. And so the next time there's an enterprise zone that expires, the current holder of the zone can apply for renewal, but anybody else in the state of Illinois, any other geographic area in the state of Illinois can apply for that enterprise zone designation, which means a great deal of Illinois tax relief. Those two or more will be in competition before a panel would be an open and transparent process, and the goal would be for the applicants to prove that their proposal would be of the best benefit to the taxpayers of the state of Illinois and to the state itself. Next, the state workers' compensation program. We learned that, in effect, workers' compensation for employees of the state of Illinois was a mess. As an example, we determined that about one-third of the workforce had applied for uh, workers' compensation. One-third of the workforce had signed documents that said they had been injured on the job and they wanted some money because of that injury. At the Mabley Developmental Center alone, 98% of the workforce at that center had applied for workers' compensation. And so we moved legislation, the governor signed the legislation, it provides that administration of workers' compensation claims by workers of the state of Illinois will be privatized. The process of selecting the company is well along, it'll be a matter of a few months, and that'll be in place so that we can bring some rhyme and reason and intelligence to this determination that a worker of the state of Illinois is entitled to workers' compensation. So I think we've done much. That's not to say that there's not more to do because clearly there's a great deal that remains to be done and all of these issues are terribly contentious. Preparing the state budget, I've already mentioned, two consecutive years, the House of Representatives has adopted a binding resolution to put a ceiling or a cap on spending by the state of Illinois. Even under the current budget, which is under a spending restraint, for those that participate in the state health care program, if you work for the state and you're in the health care program, every member of the legislature, if you go to an in-network provider today, that provider will be made to wait 385 days to get payment for the services that they provide over one year. That's the condition of budget making in the state. And we've already been notified by the state pension systems that the increase in our obligation to those systems will go up by $850 million for the next budget year. $850 million is not the total amount of the cost. The total amount of the cost is in the billions. The increase will be under certification $850 million. That takes us to the most serious problem affecting state of Illinois today, which is the fiscal condition of the five state pension systems. Now, many members of the legislature have worked diligently on attempting to solve the problem of the fiscal condition of the pension systems, Representative Cross being one, Representative Neckritz another, former Representative Biss, now Senator Biss. Same in the Senate. It's an extremely difficult issue because 
in order to achieve some improvement in the fiscal condition of these systems, part of the solution would be to tell people that there'll be a change in the promised benefit that they would receive in their pension. So for anybody that's worked on any kind of a job, whether it's in the public sector or the private sector, they've participated in programs to put money away so they'll have something in retirement. In government jobs, it's a public pension. And every worker in these government jobs gets a notice, sometimes once a month, that tells them exactly the amount of money that they would receive in a pension check were they to retire tomorrow. Well, these proposals would change that number and take it down. That's a difficult part of the issue. But a great deal of good work has been done by good members of the legislature. That work will continue, and I would emphasize the absolutely serious nature of the fiscal condition of these systems. That takes me to another aspect of this, which is what I refer to as the free lunch enjoyed by certain employers in the state of Illinois. Every school district outside the city of Chicago for certified teachers only contributes 0 0.050 to the pension cost for the teacher that works for the local school district outside the city of Chicago. For a community college district, they pay nothing for the pension cost of all their employees, the professors and the other workers. For the public universities, they pay nothing for everybody, the professors, the workers, whatever it may be. Those costs are picked up by the government of the state of Illinois under appropriation of the legislature. So for a government like the government of the state of Illinois, which is suffering through a severe fiscal crisis, there's no question about this. Nobody doubts that Illinois is suffering under a severe fiscal crisis. Money is being spent by the state government, the one that's in trouble, for local school districts, community colleges, public universities. Serious, serious problem, and if we're serious about solving the problem, why that also must be addressed. So as we move forward in good faith and in good comradeship, the issues haven't changed that much. The nature of the issues have not changed that much. They remain terribly contentious, terribly divisive. And so we have to call upon our inner resolve to dedicate ourselves to the solution of these problems working cooperatively with the other members of the House of Representatives and the Senate. And again, let me thank all of you for your vote of confidence in my role as the Speaker of the House. Uh, my pledge is the same as it's always been, to be a fair, fair-minded speaker, 